So homologous proteins are those that share the same evolutionary origin. They become different from the accumulation of mutations, and it is expected that mutations that increase fitness are uh, selected and deleterious mutations disappear, while some mutations are neutral. And a set of homologous proteins is called a protein family. Homologs can be the result of speciation, so a given population can be physically separated, for example, and each new population accumulates mutation differently. So the proteins in a new species may become different, and in this case they are called hortologs. Usually they share the same or at least a similar function across the species. Homologs can also be the result of duplication followed by divergence. So the gene coding for a protein is duplicated for some reason, and then there are two copies of it. And since there is now redundancy, it is possible, for example, that while one of the copies doesn't change much in order to keep its original function, the second copy can change a lot, sometimes even losing the original function and gaining a new one. Homologs generated by this process are called paralogs. So what we see here are members of the trypsin-like protease family. This family simultaneously presents orthologs, as for example the human trypsin and the red trypsin, and also paralogs, such as the human chymotrypsin and human elastase. We can learn a lot about protein families when they are represented by multiple sequence alignments. It is straightforward to look for very conserved positions which are related to family-wide features. Sometimes it can be related to function, in trypsin-like proteins, for example, the catalytic triad is very conserved. This aspartate is one of those. And sometimes it can be related to structure. Glycine residues, for example, may be conserved in positions that require tight turns. What may not be straightforward by looking at alignments is correlations. Sometimes the presence of a residue in a position, such as aspartate in position 2 of this alignment, correlates with the presence of another residue in another position, such as arginine in position 5. Many decades ago, it was observed that residues in contact sometimes showed correlation. It would be great that then if we could predict contacts by looking at those correlations. And that was attempted in the 90s, but uh, with the methods and sequences available, they had no use of applications, because there were too many false positives. Uh, but nowadays, though, uh, modern methods can detect contacts with very reasonable reliability, and that is now commonly used for protein structure prediction. Our idea here is to relate correlation and function. Uh, we mentioned a protein family can have subclasses. Sometimes it is a matter of specificity, as in the case of proteins. Sometimes they can do completely different things. It is unlikely that just one residue will change a protein completely from a subclass to another. That will probably be determined by a set of residues. So if an alignment is populated with many sequences from many subclasses, one could expect to find these determinants by finding sets of co-evolving residues. So Conan is a web server for those who want to study proteins using coevolution analysis, and we will show how it can be used for, for that. So the starting point is a multiple sequence alignment. The user can provide his own alignment, use an alignment from PFAM, or let the server find the appropriate PFAM alignment from a single sequence. I'll talk a bit about what we could find by using an alignment from the trypsin-like protease family. So at first we will look at the network tab. A coevolution network shows connected residues when they co-evolve. These residues here are represented by big circles and they are linked by thick lines, meaning they are very prevalent on this protein and they tend to appear simultaneously. I would expect those residues to be related to a feature which is shared by most proteins in this family. But these two residues here uh, they are shown in smaller circles, meaning that even though they tend to appear simultaneously as they are linked, they are not that prevalent in the family, so they could be related to a feature that some proteins in this family present, but not all of them. If we look at the features tab, we can check if these residues were ever annotated in Uniprot. So in that big group of residues, there are cysteines that are involved in disulfide bridges, and they were annotated from many different proteins that you can see on the right. Uh, and we can also find the catalytic triad, so those features in the first group are present in most members of this family. The second set of residues shows just two cysteines. In this case, this co-evolving pair relates to a disulfide bridge, which is present in only a subset of the protein family. This last case is curious because this aspartate, as can be found in any biochemistry book, 
is on the bottom of the trypsin's specificity pocket and is responsible for its preference for cleaving after positive residues. However, it has been found that selectivity is not determined by a single residue and specificity conversions were only possible after multiple mutations. One of the residues uh, also needed by trypsins is a glycine, which, as you can see here, coevolves with the aspartate. So how can we use Conan to study proteins? If you want to plan side direct mutagenesis experiments to find functional residues, for example, those which are conserved or which coevolve are much more likely to be affected by mutagenesis. Finding that a given position that was never investigated coevolves with a residue uh, with a functional role may be used to find new residues with functional importance. If a novel protein presents coevolving residues which are detected to be correlated to a given subclass, they are more likely to be part of that subclass, so their function can be confirmed with less experiments. And finally, this method can be used as a powerful tool for reviewing protein families. And the links for such studies are provided in the video description.